Hey, this is Brother Peter. Tidbits from the Word. A few little things I'd like to say today. Thomas, whose name was Didymus, which means doubter, was one of the disciples. When Jesus chose the disciples, he chose 12 men from uh, different types of men. And, and what is uh, astounding to me, how many of them were fishermen? And why would he choose fishermen? He would choose them for a reason. I believe he chose them for a reason. Because they had stamina. Because they had stamina. Because they were willing to finish the job. Do you know a fisherman had a hard life? He had a hard job, even though it was a happy life and a good life. By the way, I was raised on the coast of Maine when I was young, and I knew fishermen that were up at 2 o'clock in the morning. They were down there on the boat. They got the motor running and they headed out in the water. And, and many, many, many of them that I know were saved people. Many weren't, but many were. What a time to fellowship with God when you're out there on the water working. And, and the water sometimes gets boisterous and comes up. And uh, you could have a fear come on you. But if you had God in your heart, you didn't need to fear. Because he was the one that could calm the sea and calm your heart. But anyway, the disciples had come together and Jesus had called them in Acts, uh, John, excuse me, 20. And uh, Jesus had come in the door. Uh, I know he didn't either. How did he come in? He came in, he appeared. All right. The door was closed and he appeared. And he said, Peace to be unto you as my Father has sent me. Even so, send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Uh, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. And unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. God is saying, you go out and you enter into a house, any house you enter into, you tell them about Jesus, and they say, we will accept that, what you're saying. Or we will reject that. And they reject it. He's saying, then you shake the dust of your feet off and you leave there. I'll deal with them from now on out on a personal basis. But Thomas, one of the twelve named Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he saith unto them, Except I see, shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my fingers in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Wow! What a statement. Do you know what he's really saying? He's really saying Jesus said he was going to raise again. Well, if he did, in order for me to believe it was him, I got to put my hand in the nail prints in his hands and, and thrust my hand in his side. Now listen to this. And, and uh, after eight days, again, his disciples were with him and Thomas was with them. Then Jesus came in the doors, being shut, and stood in the midst and saying, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe. Listen, nobody told Jesus Thomas had said that. Do you know what? If you, I, if you belong to Jesus, he's in contact with you. He knows what you say. He knows what you think. He knows what you do. He knows you on a regular basis. He knows your heart. Jesus sees your heart from the inside out. He's not looking on your flesh as much as he's looking on your heart. And he said, if your heart will get right, your flesh will get right. Because the more your heart is for me. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. 
Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet believed. Jesus was looking for faith. And faith uh, cometh by the word and the word. Faith cometh from God by the word. And that's what we need. The word of God. We must get in it in order to increase our faith. You will never increase your faith if you don't get in it. And many other signs truly did Jesus of his disciple, which are not written in this book. Do you know that he did many, many things that are not written in this book? The Bible said if every single thing that Jesus did in his 33 years of the book would not contain them. Just think about it, what you do from morning to night, minute by minute, if you were to write it down and catalog it. There are many minutes in your life during the day that would be a whole paragraph. There are many hours in your day that could be a whole book. And so therefore, just think how much it would take to write 33 years. And many other signs we see that Jesus did raise in the flesh, in the body, he had the marks. Thomas could put his hand in the, in the marks in Jesus' hand. He could cast his hand into his side. He was there in the flesh and says he's going to raise us in the flesh. One day, God is going to, this body is going to go to the grave. When it does, the body is going to go back to dust. The soul and the spirit is going to go to be with God. One day, God's going to speak out of heaven and tell the body to come, rejoin that spirit and soul. You say, Brother Peter, that sounds like a, a fantasy. It does, but by faith, God said he's going to do it, and he is going to do it. And he's going to put us in that new heaven, and in that new earth, and in that new city, and he's going to use us again forever and forever. And we're going to be used forever. Now we're setting right now the foothold for the forever. Where are you going to be in the forever? What position are you going to be in the forever? You're going to be in a position in the forever. And uh, who knows what that position is going to be other than God. Only he knows. You see right here, he knew Thomas's heart. He knew Peter's heart. He knew the disciples' heart. He knew that they were frightened when he came in the room and he didn't walk through the door. And he said, Peace be with you, it is me. And many others. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that you might believe that you might have life through his name. The only life, my friend, that really counts today is the life we have in Jesus Christ. The life we have in the flesh will be a good one, will be an exciting one, will be one fulfilled if we follow with the heart and the soul Jesus Christ the way we're supposed to. Then we will have a good life. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to have a good life and will give us that if we'll follow him. We're studying in the Old Testament in my Sunday school class in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3 is a very good place for anybody to start that wants to get in on learning how and what to do to follow God. And that starts out with my son. Hide my word in thine heart. Bind it on thy fingertips. Bind it on thy eyelids. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in front of you. Keep it as a magnifying glass in your life. My words that you won't sin against me. And that's where you need to start. You need to start somewhere. You need to start as a lamb. Learn how to crawl. Then learn how to walk. And then learn how to run in the word. And stay in the word. My advice to you is to get in the Word and stay in the Word and grow in the Word and you will be a healthy Christian person. The Bible relates it to a good tree with a good root, with good branches, with good leaves, with good...